Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in last video we have seen something called as continuous statement. Now in this video we are going to focus on arrays. Okay, it is very important concept of a Java and it is very much useful in I would say in any project which we do. Okay, so basically um, in last videos we have seen something called as primitive data types. We have eight primitive data types. Okay, now what data types is normally doing? Using data types I can able to store values into a program. Right? That means whenever I am saying integer a is equals to 10, int is a primitive data type. Right? So what happens? A 32-bit location is get created into the memory and it is holding some value that is 10. Today we are going to see something called as user defined data type. This type uh, th this data type is basically allowing me allowing me to store similar type of data. Okay, now let's say I want to store marks okay marks of a 10 subjects so basically in normal primitive types i would have taken 10 float variables yes or no yes so i would have taken 10 float numbers and i would have stored marks in each of these float numbers uh, based on the subjects so let's say i would have taken float math and I have given some value to it, let's say 70, uh, 75 point something. Okay, similar way I would have taken 10 variables. Okay, now what I can, what another way I can use to do the same. So, can I have like this? I can have a container. This container will be able to hold 10 float numbers okay so basically this container is a container which is holding similar type of a data okay not just one number it is holding 10 numbers right now okay so this particular container i would say uh, it is as array okay so array of 10 float number okay so array it's a user defined data type which allow me to hold similar type of information. I would give us a similar example to you. Let's say I'm having a bucket and as in this bucket I'm having 10 apples. Okay. Now this bucket it is a similar example of an array. So 10 apples I would say apples are belongs to same category. And I'm holding such buckets and that is kind of an array. Now in that particular bucket, oranges are not allowed. Because oranges are belongs to different fru fruit category. Okay, so similar way in arrays, you can have a similar type of a data only. So if I'm having integer array, then it will strictly holding integer. If I'm having floating point array, then it will strictly hold um, floating points. Okay. So, uh, how we can create such arrays, we will look at, okay. So, arrays are normally having two things. One is a declaration part and second one is a initialization part. Same as your variables. In variables also, we have declaration and then we are having a definition, okay, and initialization. So, here also we are having the same things. So let's check it out how we can declare an array. So here I'm having syntax for the same type and then variable name and then you're having square brackets over here. So this is declaration of array. Here you have to specify any primitive data type or you can have any user defined data type also so primitive data type or user defined data type that should come over here 
then you have to give some identifier to identify this collection okay and then square brackets this is a declaration of a array so let's say if i'm having int and i'm having student marks so here this is the way you can have declaration now once array has been declared then i can't directly use it i have to define it so before using this particular array i have to define it then how you can define it so define means what basically and what, what do you mean by declare let's have a uh, example of it so basically uh, before going to the example let's check it out what syntax it follow so here i'm having array variable which i have what i can say declared over here and i can assign some new then type and then in a square brackets you have to write the size okay now what do you mean by this particular statement this particular statement is consist of a new new keyword is actually creating the memory okay based on the type and the size okay so let's have a look to it i'm having month days that is my reference and i'm having new in 12 so new keyword is allowing me to allocate a memory uh, for 12 integers okay so that is nothing but your simple single dimensional array all about i will show you how you can actually create it so suppose if i'm having int okay marks so this is a declaration which i'm doing Now what will happen whenever do, you are doing it? In the memory, there is one location get created, one variable get created and that is being given with the name marks. Okay. Now, this particular uh, location is right now empty. Okay. Or I would say uh, later on whenever we are defining this particular array some reference will get stored over here okay so initially suppose if I'm uh, not giving anything over here then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it like this marks is equals to new int and here I have five okay now what this statement will do basically so on a heap area of the memory it is going to create a memory block okay so this memory block is going to have a capacity to hold five integer values okay so what i can say 32 bit in each okay so this memory block uh, is having some starting address let's say a100 so this starting address value will get stored over you okay so marks i will i will say this particular variable is storing some address which is belongs to some array so i would say this a100 or this marks is also known as reference okay reference to the array now this array which is having starting address that is a hundred okay now this particular array which is holding how many integers five integers right now as right now this memory is allocated but no values is assigned to it so it will initialize to the initial value that is zero so always remember if I'm having array, if I have defined a array, then it will assign to some initial value. 
and we have already learned what is the initial values of primitives. So right now this array is holding integer and that's why the initial value will be what? Zero. Now this particular array right now is having capability to store five integer numbers. Now I want to store some numbers over here. Like I want to store 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay. Now how you will understand that where I have kept 20, where I have stored 30, where I have stored 40. So you have to give some identification for each and every such numbers in the array itself. Yes. So that is being given by using index. So array index is always starts with a zero. Uh, index is a nothing but any integer number which always starts with a zero. Okay. And which represent position of that, uh, that particular element in the array. So basically I'm having here, let's say 10, which is right now on the index 10. Similarly, I'm having 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So if I'm having array of size 5, then the last index will be always 1 less than that. That means if I'm having n over here, then the last index will be n minus 1. This is because my index always starts with 0. Okay. So if I want to identify this first location then I have to make use of like this you have to write marks that is my array name and then you have to provide index in square brackets okay if you want to assign some value you can assign it like this okay now if you want that value of this marks to be shown somewhere I want to print it somewhere so what you can do, you can make use of system.out.println statement and just you have to do is write it like this marks and then index. Fine. So this is the way you can make use of index to identify each and every element of the array. Okay. Now we already seen something called as for loops. So we will see how we can actually use for loops to iterate in the this particular dimensional of arrays. Now the example which I have shown you, it's a example of single dimensional array. Okay, that means if I show uh, diagrammatically, then it will be like this: that this is the array which is holding five locations, and in these locations, I'm having some values. So this is a one dimensional array. Now we will see how we can use multi dimensional array. Now what do you mean by that? Let's check it out. I'm having an example here. Int marks. Okay. Or uh, I'm having over here two square brackets and then here I'm having new int and then I'm providing 3 comma 2. Now what do you mean by this? This is the array, two dimensional array, which is having capability to store marks of three subjects. Okay, marks of three subjects, but I want for each subject, I want to store marks of practicals as well as orals. Okay, so if I, I will draw it, so the draw will be like this. Drawing will be like this. I'm having a matrix over here, which is having three rows. So I would say the first index, first uh, square bracket is representing row. And then I'm having another uh, square bracket which is defining the column okay so how many columns it is having two columns so the division will be like this now how we can identify each section of it so let's have a look as you know our index always starts with zero so this portion this particular block will be zeroth row and zeroth column so this is my first row or I can say 0th row which is 
having zeroth row and zeroth column then this is zeroth row and first column okay then here my first columns uh, first row starts so here it will be one but column is zero so this is column zeroth column and this is one column so then this combination becomes one uh, one row and which column now this will be one column then we are having second row so second row will start with two but the column will be zero is two and one okay so this is the way your matrix forms so this is if you see I'm having row as well as columns so two dimensions I'm defining right now so this is nothing but a multi-dimensional array okay so this is the identification for individual row and column so if you want to store some value in this particular location how you can do that so basically what's the name of my array the name of array is marks at which location I want to store data I want to store a data at 0th row and 0th uh, column so you have to provide your row and column and then you want to assign some value over here so I want to store 20 over here so you can do it like this so 20 will get stored in the marks with the 0 row and 0 column so here it will come now I want to ident I want to store some data at 2 1 so how I can store you can make use of like this marks 2 1 and you can assign some value to it okay so this is the way you can actually make use of your multi-dimensional arrays okay so we will see programmatical representation of single dimensional array and multiple dimensional array so before moving to that part uh, i want to give some combinations that we can use with the array so basically we have seen how to declare an array and how to define the array differently i mean in one statement i can declare and one statement i can define but you can combine them both and you can make use of it like this so you are having in marks and you can have like this int new int and then you can provide here the one which I've just given in the example so this is the one of the way you can actually declare and define the array second way is in the single dimensional array I'm telling int marks you can provide the square brackets between data type and the name of the array okay and then you can just write it like this new int okay so and you have to provide the size so this is also one of the valid combination we are having okay so there are uh, such combinations we can make use of 